Hey guys, welcome back to another episode in the deep playthrough of Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I am seeing some graphical corruption going on over here. Maybe it is like the fog that is supposed to obscure those trees and not doing a really good job. But it is what it is. Um, the aim of today's flight, welcome aboard by the way, is uh, to do a second attempt at getting closer to Mount Everest. I did it uh, in the previous attempt uh, or episode as well, but I didn't get, uh, I, I decided to return back to the airport because the surrounding mountains actually are super high. Uh, the, I'm, I'm not really sure how high, but I know Mount Everest is like 29,000 feet. That is like double the uh, height or altitude that this airplane can manage. This little Cessna 152 can only get up to like 14,000 feet. Uh, the mountains surrounding Mount Everest, I think they are also like 20,000 feet or something. So it was pretty hard getting close because I, I was just being obstructed by mountains surrounding it. But I actually uh, want to try this one more time just to try and find valleys, lower valleys that I can follow that would maybe uh, yeah, um, circle me around uh, eventually towards uh, the vicinity of Mount Everest to just check it out. Afterwards, I will not be trying this that long I will be going to the uh, pyramids in Egypt. That would be a nice next landmark to check out. But uh, so that will probably be total level flight uh, above the deserts of Egypt. This is totally mountainous flight. This is really pretty suicidal. Uh, just like the last time, the fog is uh, amazing over here, uh, or the low clouds, whatever they are. And uh, yeah, it makes for pretty hard VFR flights because I'm not really on instruments or uh, at least not uh, navigating on instruments. Of course, I do know my altitude and uh, altitude and uh, plane attitude and stuff from the uh, indicators in the cockpit. But still, it is um, pretty damn dangerous uh, compared to modern aircraft which have which have like a Garmin uh, GPS and a flight management system which actually shows the mountains and the terrain on your um, uh, touch screen so to say so you really at all times even with zero visibility outside have a pretty good indication of what's coming up in this airplane not so much you really don't see anything uh, currently uh, so if a, mount, a mountain could just be like 300 uh, or let's say 500 uh, feet away and you will only <laughs> notice it once it pops out uh, right in front of you while you're doing like uh, 100 uh, uh, knots per hour. Um, there's one thing that uh, I find a bit annoying and that is I think the altimeter, I will not, I will stop messing about with it, I've been already messing about with it uh, or reading up on it quite a lot but the altimeter seems to be not very correct because it currently reads some 3500 um, feet while according to the internet we're currently in um, a really small um, soft runway like uh, like a grass runway or something just north of uh, a little bit bigger runway this is uh, Lukla and we are now at I forgot the name but it's, it's uh, a couple of miles to the north um, according to, to the internet this runway is at some 20,000 feet elevation while my altimeter only reads three, or no, now I understand. Because this one is actually at the one. So that means, uh, ah, this is correct after all. 
So this means uh, 10,000, the small dial. Then the middle dial is, um, yeah, it's at 2,500. So that is 10,500 plus the big dial is hundreds of feet. So that makes 10,000. 2500 plus 500 is 13,000 feet. Yeah, but it's still too low, I would say. Um, because 13. No, it's not 13,000 feet. It is. Um, sorry. 10,000 plus 2500 is. Yeah, that's it, by the way, it's 2,500. Uh, this one already indicates, of course, how far this one has gone ahead, because it moves slowly ahead, just like the hour dial in a watch moves slower, depending on the uh, faster speed of the small dial or needle. Uh, so we are at 1,250 feet, which equates to what I would say some 4,000 uh, meters, 4 kilometers. Well, according to the internet, this place actually is at 9 kilometers. No, not 9 kilometers. God damn it. Let's, uh, one second. It's all quite confusing. Um, ah, it is actually uh, correct, I think. It, it was way, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure anymore what I said in the beginning, but this airport supposedly is at 2860 meters, which equates to 9300 feet. And the altimeter reads, um, 1250, yeah, which is of course, too high, but I think we have to correct for the cor the altimeter for the correct pressure. Let's do that. I think I I checked it out. It was no. I thought it was 1015, but that actually only makes it go higher. All right. So um, the altimeter seems to be off with 3,000 feet, which is of course quite. A lot but it is what it is I will stop messing about with it at least it is uh, I can I also understood it can be a bit maybe um, be off because of mountainous uh, va areas valleys and stuff so let's just attribute it to that I'm actually happy that at least it's reading higher instead of lower so that when you land it's not like you think like, oh, I still have 1,000 feet left and while well, you only have like 100 feet left. I prefer to be on the higher side with the altimeter than the other way around. Anyways, um, yeah, let's get airborne because it is of course already 17, uh, almost 1,700 hours local time. So I'm not sure um, how long it takes over here in Nepal to be dark for um, sunset. So let's get cracking. I hope, by the way, I will be making uh, takeoff because this is a really short runway. I tried some plate testing in uh, a twin engine uh, propeller aircraft, the DA62, and I actually really had to be creative to get off the ground. I really had to go sideways off the runway to get into a valley, into almost into a village. Uh, to get enough distance to uh, to get takeoff, just the runway follow the runway straight away. It was too short, and I crashed into the trees after it. But this is a smaller and lighter air aircraft. Hopefully, it will be uh, taking off. I checked the the takeoff distance. It is within uh, bounds, uh, but of course, takeoff distance varies a lot depending on altitude and on, on wind. I don't think there's a lot of wind currently. I also checked the, the meteor meteorological reports. So wind is not really a factor, but altitude could be. 
Uh, but yeah, let's just try. I also uh, drove the airplane a little bit further backwards than what was the initial starting position. So hopefully those extra bit of feet will help us get airborne. Um, all right, here we go. Um, let's disengage. Oh, wrong button. The parking brake. Let's put this one. No, this is not working. Uh, I wanted to say full throttle, but that's not really working at this altitude. And of course that means because we are high up, the air is less dense and with the same amount of gasoline in the cylinders you get relatively a, a smaller portion of air so the mixture will be rich already richer the higher you get uh, and we are pretty high up to uh, yeah, some 3000 meters, some 10,000 uh, feet so that's why I cannot apply full rich mixture because apparently I think that lever over there with the mixture setter that is probably uh, configured for sea level pressures uh, and standard pressures and temperature settings uh, uh, and we are now of course substantially higher so I will not go full rich I will uh, keep it uh, where it is now it seems to be pretty fine the richer I go, the lower the RPMs, and I would think, oh, it also takes a while for the engine to catch up. Very slowly, actually. Alright, at 60 I am about 700 RPM and if I lean it out, yes, it actually rises still, so 50%. Forty it rises even more. Ten percent mixture it drops. Twenty is also not really happy. Thirty it rises. Forty it remains the same. Fifty. So I'm going with sixty to be a bit on the uh, richer side because of course the leaner you go the um, uh, more temperature uh, the higher the temperature and uh, yeah there could be a risk of engine damage uh, if you go f f way too lean I don't think that is an immediate risk I think that's more like w when you're like consistently longer periods having like a asking for a lot of power and going way too lean uh, and it can also increase the chance of uh, knocking being either pre-ignition or uh, detonation in the cylinders, meaning the, the air fuel mixture explodes outside the regular combustion cycle, which can also have catastrophic uh, results for the uh, engine. So I am not going too lean. We are on the little bit the rich side. The um, parking brake is off. The flaps are at the intermediate oh, position, 10 degrees. We could also go to 20 or 30, but let's first try 10 degrees. So here we go, full throttle. Let's hope for the best. By the way, it's better if I first keep the parking brake engaged and uh, it doesn't work anymore oh shit and that's the thing with this airport i know i try to brake and then i release the brake but the planes can get stuck over here somehow it's really awkward 
It happened with the other plane as well, which was more powerful. Planes simply get stuck here. God damn it. So I'm probably Ah, no. Now it works. <laughs> I had the uh, parking brake accidentally depressed. Alright, here we go. We can rotate. Holy shit, we're going way too slow. Oh, this is not gonna work whatsoever. Oops. Was not expecting this one. Right, I'm going right. It's longer. It's a bummer, I cannot really take off here. <laughs> Why is that? God damn it. Right, I think this is not gonna work because I've already tried it quite some times with. Um, uh, unless maybe I go the other way around. Like. Yeah, let's try and use this uh, hill to get some more speed. But I al already tried <laughs> tried it with um, another plane and it was super hard. So maybe we will have to get eventually to actually the airport what I set as the, uh, the landing airport. This is um, takeoff, this is landing. That is a little bit longer and it's also... Um, a paved or a hard surface like a, a tarmac but let's just try if we can use this hill come on plane get some freaking lift going or some uh, thrust not really working Almost. Come on, plane. We can do this. Alright, here we go. Trying to get up higher. Let's just go for it. It did give us a little bit extra speed. But we really need to be faster than this. Ah, now we are gaining. Woohoo! <laughs> Was not expecting that to work. But now it is, uh, again, pretty dangerous with the mountains over here. Oh, I'm banking a lot. Oh, I really have to get up there as soon as possible. Oh, all right, this is just going, um, yeah. Pure luck, I I'm, I'm really, it's not in my control now whether we will <laughs> crash in the mountain or not. I do think we are heading oh. east. Yeah, I think that could be good. Uh, one second. I want to bring up the map, but I really have to control the yoke, so I cannot get my hand off the button, off the thumbstick, but let's do it like this. Yeah, I'm going a little bit more to the right because the, oh, 
Holy shit. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Alright. Um... Yeah, I'm going to take off from the uh, other airport. This... Uh, or maybe I should have tried it uh, uh, again, but... Uh, the darker the uh, color on that map, I think the higher the elevation. Uh, and I was trying to avoid it, but yeah, I ended up crashing. Alright, this is where we took off from, Siang Poke. But we will now be going from... Um, let's... Go here. Yeah, or by the way, I want to do it. I want to try it one more time. It was pretty funny. Sorry. Um, so this will be our departure. And we will be landing on a little bit better runway because. Um, this really is too short, it seems. Oh, shit. To land, we will be landing over here. Set as arrival. Do this one. Plane, that's correct. Let's do the no passenger. Mark this as zero. Uh, fuel, yeah. Maybe I can even get away with l lesser fuel. Not sure what the range is currently, but let's keep it for now. Close. Let's set the weather to real life. Close. Um, where is my range? Yeah, this is a lot of range. I can get away with, I think, a bit uh, less fuel. Because I think Mount Everest is over here somewhere, to the northeast, and we now can almost fly. Uh, f we can fly far into China, which is not necessary. Of course, we will not be going in a straight line. We will be following valleys and uh, yeah, lower areas if there are any. Probably I won't be making it, but um, and wait, this is pretty cool. This. VOR stations, but there are no VOR stations to the northeast where we want to go. There are only stations over here to navigate. But anyways, um, let's uh, dump some fuel um, over here. That makes taking off, I would say, easier. Yes, let's do. 35% close that one so same airports uh, same uh, d d departure same arrival airports uh, let's do it parking I find that more fun uh, and over here let's do also parking from where we start and end and here we go so the main thing is after takeoff, I think I can take off over here, is to uh, immediately go westward. Or not west, uh, east, uh, eastbound. At least the other direction than <laughs> where we just went. It may sound stupid, but I find this a pretty fun challenge. Flying around in the Himalayas in a plane that can barely uh, reach the same height as the lowest mountains in the area. All right, here we are again, but now we are We are in the other direction, All right? But I actually prefer. Where are we now? Yeah, 
there. I'm not sure this is going to work. Because I do need that extra speed from that hill. I don't think otherwise I can get airborne. And I think, but we are, I think, facing downward. Let's just try it. Um, this one is 50 or something, 40, that's fine. Uh, let's release the parking brake. And here we go. Oh, by the way, let's first do full throttle. All right, we are now eastbound. I'm not sure whether that was the same direction as just, no, I think it's the other direction. Um, I think we're good to go. Here we go. Come on, plane. You can do this. Yes, yes. better and now the idea is to get southbound I think south is where the least mountains are and then first get some altitude and then we will make our way to Everest Retracting the flaps and let's just keep this southbound course. And get some altitude going. Alright, it won't be long before sundown, I think. Sunset. So imagine flying in this fog. Nah, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but in the dark, then you really don't see anything. Now at least I have some sense of how far we can see, which is almost zero. But in the dark, it's totally nothing. Alright, I am trimming the plane to have it move upward by itself. I must say, climbing. Let's do it a little bit more steep, the climb. Veering, of course, from the 
south. Come on, plane, you can do this. And this goes slowly. All right, we have to be a bit patient. Eventually we'll get there if we don't run into a mountain. Five thousand feet. We've climbed, or th yeah, thirteen, fifteen thousand feet. We've climbed twenty-five hundred feet. why it's climbing of course this low this plane can only reach i think 14 and a half so we are actually already outside the plane's envelope i think so that would be we cannot really get and i'm gonna try and get higher but if we cannot clear these of seeing Mount Everest. Of course, I can reload the game with... Um, non-real-life weather settings. Maybe I could do that. Like, in, uh, in time settings, just select uh, a daytime instead of nighttime or evening time. less clouds that could be an option but I really like the fact that it, this is supposed to be um, a real-time weather that really gives it for me an extra layer of immersion we are still climbing albeit quite slowly let's just hope we can get above the clouds let's lean it out a bit more
By the way, I did some more preparation as well. So I'm already now logging in the top left communication. I'm logging into the tower of our destination airport, which according to the internet is 122.5. into it for the fun. Alright, we don't hear anything. getting any higher that's probably because there is thin air and the wingspan simply and the, and the propeller uh, actually we are still going ahead at a reasonable pace but probably the wingspan simply doesn't generate enough lift in this thin air to climb a lot more although now we seem to be going a bit quicker up If it's somewhere. It would be pretty cool to get above the clouds and see the mountains and the sunset. I didn't put in too little fuel actually, but we'll see. What's the worst thing that can happen? We crash. <laughs> Weird stripe that goes over that wing. It's probably the graphical artifact from the lights that we have enabled. Or maybe it's like water running down. Con condensation. No, I don't think so. Just a bug. A glitch. How 
high clouds can go, but yeah, we're nearing 20,000 feet. I would say we could get above the clouds right about now. Amazing that the plane is still climbing. Hitting 20,000. Oh, we're banking. Plane seems to be a bit twitchy over here. If you look at the attitude indicator straight ahead with the blue horizon in the ground, the brown ground level, you can see. It's rolling around a lot. Ah, now it's steady. Maybe it was my controller, I don't know. Controller drift. Meter says it's at zero. What it actually measures, I would assume there is some more amps flowing through this airplane currently than zero, but maybe that is just the charging rate of the alternator or something or the battery. No idea. Yes! Woohoo! Was not expecting this to work actually. Here we go. Out of the clouds. Alright, but I doubt we can get over them actually. But let's try it anyways. There, I see sky. Woohoo! Pretty beautiful. It's amazing. I think <coughs> that the Cessna is rated for 14,000 feet, and we're now nearing 20,000 feet. Let's see where we are. Yeah, we do have to make a, um, a turn. Not too long from now, I would say. And damn it, back into the clouds. 
Oh, and there are mountains. We are now heading towards mountains, actually. Uh, but I think we will be above them. But it is a brown area that we're running to in. Alright, let's try and get past that cloud, that white cloud to the left and see if it becomes a bit uh, clearer after it and then make a turn. that little number says maybe that's miles per hour no because it doesn't know the ground speed over here but it seems to indicate ah that's probably uh, the big numbers are the des the, the tens and the small numbers are the ones so that's probably 40, no, that's also not it, 46, we are going faster than 46, we are going 48 or something, whatever. Alright, we are in a bit more clearer air, which is a good thing. I would say, but we do have to make a turn. Are that mountains? I don't know. Mount Everest will actually rise above these clouds quite substantially, like one third higher than the cloud eight. We do have to make a turn. Let's make a. The thing is, to the right, the clouds seem to be way more than to the left. And uh, let's just make a left turn. But to the left, we have like that brown area which indicates mountains. But we are already over it, so we are over the mountains, I would say. This is just um, 
a zero visibility training uh, session, more or less. visibility in the late afternoon early evening it may seem pretty boring like okay what are you doing you're just slowly sitting in a plane watching everything go by but it's, it's quite exhilarating and also relaxing actually it's an amazing piece of software I must say We should now be go heading, yeah, we have to go 90 degrees to the left. Although actually I think Mount Everest is over here, so we would, could go just straight north. I don't really feel like going back into the clouds. At one point comes a point we don't really have a choice. Although further on it seems to be more clear almost. Check it out, the plane keeps on climbing. getting like a nice sunshine Can you imagine how beautiful it is over here and on the ground level barely see anything it was one big grey sea in total so don't expect a perfect landing but let's hope it will work out um, hope you enjoyed I hope to see you in the next one and for the meantime do not forget always keep on gaming see you later